I, uh, okay, that was very loud. But there is five different areas of clip envelope automation that we need to have a look at first. So first one is envelope editor and where we can find that from is this little button here that shows an enveloped box. So this one here, do, 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 do. when you click from there, that's what we will be looking at a lot today. Uh, the second one is so, so, the, so the second one is creative techniques using the warp modes with automation. Uh, warp modes here. Third one is unlinking loops. So this area here, linked, unlinked. We're gonna be looking at that. And then we have four unlinked loops, automation length which is this area here. So we're gonna be looking at that. And then we have recording automation in session view. Hi, 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 and welcome to LNA Does Audio Stuff. So this is the part two of the series all about automation in Ableton Live, which is also part of bigger uh, series that I have on this channel where I talk about all about a certain aspect of Ableton Live. So I've already covered group pool, return tracks, uh, uh, um, warping and queue. So that's all happening already here. So I'm going to put the playlist down below so that you can have a look. Sees. And if you haven't checked the previous, the part one episode yet, then please check that out after or before this episode, just so that things make sense. But now we will cover clip automation. So let's get into it. So let's just start with this envelope box situation for the clip. First, in an audio sample, we need to make sure that we have warped it up and we also looped it. That will help you a lot with everything that we're gonna do today. Then these two drop down menus show up. We have a first drop down menu, which is device chooser. So from here, we can choose a device. There's always clip and mixer. And now I have also added a reverb to this track. So if I go here, you can see that there is a reverb on the track, ta-da. So I can also choose to control and automate and mo modulate stuff from the reverb. And then we have mixer. We are also the option only show adjusted envelopes, which we also had in the arrangement menu in the, the part one video that I showed. Same thing. And the lower one is control chooser. So we can choose what do we want to control on clip, reverb or mixer. So example, if we go to mixer, we also get two other options, automation or modulation. And what's the difference between automation and modulation? So automation, which is represented here as a red line here on the clip, automation forces the absolute value of a certain control, example here, automation to a certain change where modulation changes rel relative to the control. And modulation is here as blue. So let's have a look at automating a clip. So we have track mixer and track volume selected and automation here. I create a breakpoint there and I create a breakpoint here and I want the volume to increase on this sample when I play it. So what are we doing here is basically automating a clip separate from the rest of the song. And that's the unique thing in Ableton Live that we can do it separately, not attached to the timeline of the whole song. So let's listen to that. And on the main track, you can also on the fader, you can just also see how it's automated and how the absolute value of the automation changes. That is what's happening here. 
I can right click here and just clear all envelopes. Hey, in this point, please subscribe to this channel. Please hit the bell icon and please give it a thumbs up because I post every single Sunday and I'm here talking a lot about Ableton Live as well as music production and a lot of funny, funny, funny challenges and fun videos. So you want to be here for that. Okay, let's get back into this video now. And then let's have a look at what's different in the MIDI area. So we go to the MIDI track and in here we don't need to warp anything. We can just go to the device chooser and choose from a lot of devices, whatever we want to automate. Yes. So as you can see, I have a drum kit selected onto this track. In the device, you can see that we have the kit here, but also we have all the separate sounds as well as all the different um, effects that are attached to the drum kit. But let's just go to the kit first and then and we're going to add a filter cutoff to the drum kit break points and I'm just going to take that filter down and let's listen to that. So it just loops over the sample and it allows you to automate it. As you can see from the control chooser, you get a lot of options, especially when you go to the separate sounds. Whoa, look at this. You can actually add Clyde, transpose. Let's transpose the kick example like that. No, let like that. And there we go. So you can actually automate in so much like different areas of the, of the whole kit. Okay, the next thing, let's have a look at some creative warping tools. So especially on a drum sample, I would like to show you how beats warp mode, whoop, there, beats warp mode works with the drum sample. So let's just listen to the drum sample first. Uh, we can go to the device chooser and choose clip. And then from there, you go to sample offset. You can also see these grayed out options, grain size and flux. And those are to do with texture, grain size and flux that you can also automate. But we're going to just work on the beats for now. Let's go to sample offset. And there we go. Now we can actually create a very interesting structure to this beat. So let's take the bent pen tool and I'm going to start drawing in some envelope. There we go. And let's have a listen how that sounds now. Whoa. There we go. So that is actually a lot of fun because you can use the warp tools as a creative way to with the automation to create very interesting structures. Another creative technique if if I go to the synth part, is example, I can insert a, a wave shape like a square wave. Let's add that there. And you can see that now add it there. And if I just copy that and duplicate like that, and let's listen, and that's on the speaker on aspect. I can add this kind of stutter effect very fast by using the automation tools here. So let's say I want to try another automation on this clip, but I don't want to delete the automation. I just want to change the clip sound. I can go and find another clip. There we go. I just drop, drag and drop it to this area here. And there you go. You see that it's changed it to the values of the new clip. And that's how we can be very creative. Number three thing, we're going to be looking at unlinking envelopes from the loop. Yes, that's a very cool thing. So if you go to the envelope section here and there's a loop and it says linked. So let's just click that and what happens. No, the signal has disappeared, but we have this empty envelope. So now we're unlinked the actual sound from the 
envelope that we're editing. I'm gonna go clip and I'm gonna go transpos transport position, transposition. I don't know. <laughs> and if I normally use it, I can just use this envelope here and just transpose it lower. And let's play. And every time it kind of goes one cycle, it always goes down. But when it's unlinked, what we can do like that, we can shorter the envelope, but it doesn't shorten the clip. We can now change the value on the envelope, automate it like this, and then listen what happens. So it's actually, if I go to the mixer, you can see the length, the actual sample is still the same length. It is, I promise you. But the actual envelope and the automation is going in a faster pace. So it goes only in this length where sample plays the whole thing. Then that takes us to the part four where we can, we can go here unlink it again and then we need to activate the loop here okay and then from the length we can actually create let's say four bars like that oh i got dark again Ooh. we can now create four bars or yeah four bars and then create automation in it like that and then maybe a little bit here like that, and then when we play it, so let's go back to the mixer just to look at this sample. So you see that now it's actually eight bars long, the view that we can see. So that is how long the envelope is, but we are only playing audio in um, one bar. starts again. Fascinating. Number five is recording automation in session view. Slightly different than automating in arrangement view. So what we need to do is first have a look at this. So we need to go and make sure that the automation arm is activated on the top. Then we need to make sure that the arm recording is activated on the track. As soon as I click this, it out automatically connected to these drop down menus. So I didn't need to go here and look for a mixer and then look for panning. I am I can just go here, example volume. Now it says mixer track volume as like that. And now instead of going to the global recording button, because that will then start recording into arrangement view, I'm gonna use the session record button. So session record button. And when let's activate that. And start. And there we go, it's automated. Yay! Also, we can go to this uh, the preferences, and from there, if you go record, warp, and launch, and there is an option record session automation in armed tracks. If you do that, all tracks, your track doesn't need to be armed to be able to record automation on it. That was the horrible sample that we did. But as you can see, I managed to now active uh, create automation to that. Even the arm record button was not activated, but I still made some automation there. And that's how it's done. Okay, so the Hey Weekly question. The question comes from Lauren von den Sm Smilde? 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 <laughs> Sorry, I can't ever pronounce anyone's name in here. They are saying, I would like to know how to make a, and with what Ableton instrument I can make a sequ sequence appreciator like in this song. And then there's a song and I listen to it. And thank you for the question. So what I've done in here that I've just put example wash bass to a track here. And I just created a couple very long sounds. So which sounds like this. 
long notes. And then I just go to MIDI FX and from there I select Appreciator. From there I can just select the rate and steps, distance and style. Those are the most important things. So let's have a look at what we can create. So just without anything, the rate is one out of eight, that's faster. And then we can go steps. How many steps do we want it to go up and down? And this is the style, so that basically how, in what kind of pattern does it go up and down? Up and down, up and down. Just a very, very easy sequence. I use that a lot and that's very fun. You could also get an answer to your question if you just ask down below. This was the answer to this question. Bye. Okay, thank you so much for watching. Please come again. Please subscribe. Please hit the bell icon. Please give it a thumbs up. And also I'll see you here next week. So yeah, see you next week. Okay, next week every single Sunday next week. <laughs> okay, bye.